Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be joining us from today. Uh, thanks for stopping by or, uh, or being right where you are and, and uh, checking us out. My name is Lucas Mays. I'm one of the applications engineers here with AFL, uh, the, the splicing group specifically. We'll be going through the 90S uh, today. I'll be talking about uh, some specific features, however, with the 90S that can help you get the most out of the machine. So this isn't like a splicing 101. This is for someone who you know either has our has this equipment and is looking to uh, get more out of it, or if you're comparing it to what you currently have and you're you know some things kind of stick out to you that might actually benefit you as far as time savings, uh, then glad to hear it. That's what this is for. So we're again we're going to be focusing on aspects around the machine, uh, some features that really just cut some some fat out of your job as far as time goes. And, uh, but then still, of course, maintains quality in your work. We definitely don't want to sacrifice there. Um, so leave comments below, by the way, obviously this is a live stream. So feel free to leave comments below. I'll be kind of taking a look at those as I go here. And uh, I'll certainly try to stop and address those verbally as uh, we go along. So any questions, feel free to leave them. And if I don't get to them during the stream, as I'm talking here, I'll certainly take a peek after we're done with this portion of it and uh, I'll address those if I hadn't already. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna be showing you guys a video on uh, some of these things that I'll be giving into more detail. Uh, so here we go, watch this quick clip. The 90S offers programmable features like an automated wind protector and independently programmable sheath clamps. Now with increased speeds to accelerate your productivity. Fiber retention clamps prevent fibers from lifting out of the splicer when both sheath clamps open automatically, keeping your splice safe, simplifying and expediting your workflow. Compared to the 70S Plus, the 90S Wind Protector opens sooner after loss estimations appear on its monitor, resulting in reduced splicer operation time. The 90S makes positioning splice sleeves easy. The new sheath clamp design ensures that the splice point is always in the center of the sleeve, thus optimizing splice protection and minimizing operation steps. All right, so again, that's an overview of what we'll be looking at in detail here. So hi again, the view might be a little different there. So you still have me in your top left, should be. But uh, of course, this is the equipment. This is the 90S, the CT50, and then some, you know, the, the tools I'm sure you're all familiar with, cleaning and um, mechanical stripper. So again, we'll be focusing on the 90S here. So we'll, um, just to start off, some of the things that were mentioned, let me take you into uh, the splicer a bit closer there. So there are a few things that really kind of enhance the splicing aspects as far as speed goes around primarily the sheath clamps. There's a lot of changes here from our previous generation and then what else you might find out there. Uh, so to start off, you might've noticed there's the, uh, there's a little dial up here, green, yellow. So if these are in the green, I'm gonna pop these open for you real quick. You might've seen it highlighted blue in the video, these second little arms here. So these little arms are actually what keep the uh, fiber secure after the sheath clamps open automatically so that the fiber doesn't pop out by mistake or slide on you too bad. Um, so when you're initially opening the machine to use for the first time, you'll have to individually raise these, no big deal like so. Um, but as soon as you get going, you'll have your fibers in there, you know, they'll splice. And then when you lift, those will simply uh, lift because they are just a gentle, um, secure. So also with the sheath clamps, again, just talking about getting the most out of your machine. If you're doing any kind of termination, especially, and you might be putting frication tubing over 250, or, you know, it's a transition splice from an outdoor to indoor. Uh, we have this sheath clamp here has both sides, whichever side, you know, of course you might be bringing it into um, this little protrusion here that you see just pop out. when I press, when I kind of push in the back here, uh, this is a little pinch that keeps the, uh, loose 900 buffer sticking to the 250 inside. So it's it's a common mistake and I, it's not intuitive, I understand. But when you put in 900 that has a 250 just floating around in there, that 250 will kind of free float within that loose 900. You know, there's a lot of room for that fiber to slide in and out. And so this pinch point will come up and grab that outer jacket, pinch it to the 250 so they move together when the splicer attempts to splice. So this is something, again, you'd use in that scenario for the loose buffer 
wherever it may be. And as soon as you're done and you're ready to go back to your standard 250 to 250 or even type 900 to 900, flip it back just like so. So green means it's down and it's away, not use. Red means that you've got that sticking up. And so I always push it even in from the back here. It's just a lot easier because I understand this is kind of small. Um, so that's some things around the sheath clamp that really make it a bit different. Uh, lastly, you might have seen the uh, kind of red circle and line and point there. And I'll show you the whole splice here in a second that makes that a little bit more obvious. But the distance from this point here to the center of electrodes is exactly 30 millimeters. So if you're using a standard 60 millimeter sleeve, which again is by far the most common sleeve in the industry, no matter whose sleeve it is for single fiber, what that does is that puts that you can kind of see there that that whole sleeve spans that length. So then that means your splice point is right dead center of the sleeve by simply pinching here and tilting. And so there's no need to use a secondary step to, you know, reference or slide the uh, sleeve over your splice point. So without further ado, um, we'll kind of just step out for a quick second here and go into uh, the whole splicing. Um, some other things I'll even kind of talk as I go here to show. Um, so I, what I've got here are just two, two, two single 250 fibers on both sides. And uh, I've already put my sleeve on, my blue, my orange, just coming out of some buffer tubes. So I've got my sleeves on already. And um, again, we'll be prepping like normal, nothing too different that you probably haven't already seen. And uh, as I go, I might mention a little bit about the CT50 here. Um, because again, just talking about getting the most out of your machine, it does help you do that. So the CT50, you can see there's a there's a pairing here. And I'll, I'll bring you in closer in a little bit to kind of show what that means. But long story short is it's tracking the cleave quality, cleave performance uh, for you, the splicer is anyway. So rather than you having to worry about keeping up with this blade, how many cleaves you've done, uh, if the blade's dull or not, the splicer is going to take care of that for you. So again, you know, the name of the game being about reducing time, reducing, uh, you know, hassle or even mental energy in general on the things you don't have to. You know, if I can focus here on splicing more so, then that's what I would uh, rather do. So you kind of see I'm holding both of these together like so. I know it's far away, but I got my white pre-prepped. and I'm actually going to clean. I clean these together a lot of times. Just a uh, little faster, in my opinion, you know, and you might wonder if this is legitimate. Well, People do it with ribbon ribbon fiber all the time. You got 12 fibers, you know, side by side cleaning. So why can't I do two? So from there, though, I'll split them up. I'll put one in each hand. And so then we're going to raise the cleaver. It's in position. Drop this. Keep my other fiber out of the way. Cleave. Drop this into the splicer. And then actually you can. Now, granted, I'll show you two different ways. So one thing you can do is to bring this up and set it like so. So there's a little groove here in the sheath clamps that will allow you to set that right there so it'll just stay put. And whenever you're done with the splice, you'll see why that's beneficial. And so then again, cleave second fiber. And transition into uh, laying this into the splicer. Make sure I got that aligned in there. So as soon as that drops in, of course, you see that close. It's still going to bring my two fibers in. No issues. Of course, leaving my sleeve there so that's in place. Bring it in. Splice. Do its thing. Give me an estimate. Perfect. Ready to go. Lift gently. Tilt. Drop into the tube heater. Keep tension. Grabs it away from me. And then here I am now. I've got my... Oops, should throw that away. And then while that's heating, I'm getting out my second wipe. I'm prepping, getting ready to start, of course, prepping my next fiber. I always prep those, the wipe before I uh, actually go to strip and splice because I, uh, as you saw, I kind of clean them both together. Um, and I'm going to leave that in the tube heater until I go to actually put these next fibers in the splicer again because I'm just trying to maximize, you know, doing what I have to do and then taking advantage of doing other things while the splicer is doing what it has to do. So we'll just do one more here real quick and I'll show you the, uh, you know, we'll see that one more time. Okay, so, yeah, nothing new here. I'm sure many of you guys watching, again, have either seen demos like this, whether it's at a trade show or, or maybe you're a splicer yourself and you've been doing this for quite a while. You can teach me a few things. All right. 
And so you see another thing too, I'm not closing this little clamp here to the left. I know some folks enjoy the, or, you know, prefer the extra security and there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, but again, just for the sake of speed, lay this down. I know where my reference is to 10 millimeters cleave. And uh, so I'm gonna come in here and lay it in like so and just close and keep on going. And so if you don't forget, if you don't remember to bring your sleeve up like I just did, you can kind of tuck it into the wind protector here and um, leave it like so. You're not gonna hurt it and uh, you can kind of squeeze it and feel it grab. So as soon as it's in there like so, lift, tilt, oh, and then you make the mistake like me of not taking your previous one out. And uh, we'll set this down very carefully like so. <laughs> so you're gonna be a better splicer than I am and not do something like that, of course. But uh, you get the gist there of, and then I broke my fiber. <laughs> get talking and not focusing on what I'm doing. So you get the gist there though, of course, of what I was trying to show you, I apologize. But um, so, you know, I would have had taken those out while it was splicing rather than talking. And then I would have lowered in my orange and that would have heated, heated and done, uh, done what you saw the first time around. So a couple things here and um, a couple things to uh, look at as far as, okay, again, maximizing speed. So one of them actually is even in choosing your splice mode. So um, most folks, I'm going to zoom you in here to see the uh, screen real quick. <clears throat> uh, see a question. Sorry, I'm just now looking at this. The way around, like, the, can you change the clamps the other way around, like on the 70s position from Dennis? Um, yeah. Oh, thank you for showing that comment there. Um, can you change the clamps the other way around? Um, I may, I may, I may be missing you there, Dennis. I apologize on exactly what you mean. Um, I mean, the sheath clamps are fixed where they are here. I'll take you up here so we can see, see those again real quick. Um, so the sheath clamps are fixed where they are. Um, you know, the loose buffer piece of it I mentioned, you know, is on both sides. And so they, you know, whichever side you may be on, you can do that. And, um, now if you wanted to, the other thing would be, so it's going to think I loaded fiber, so we're going to reset. Um, for this, the secondary arm there. So if I move this into the yellow position, you see that it actually comes up like so. It doesn't stay down. So that would be one thing. If maybe that's what you're talking about, um, you can do one or the other there. And again, it's going to think that I got fiber in there. That's okay. Um, another question. So thanks, Lucas. What about splicing G654 fiber type? Um, so that actually great question because that transitions to where I was actually going already. So let's get here onto the splicer screen. So the uh, splice mode, again, I'll, I'll handle both of those two in one type of thing. So when it comes to speed, so most folks are probably used to using this auto mode or maybe even this SM auto mode. These are kind of your best friends and have been for folks for a long time. Um, understandably so. They do some small tweaks to your arc calibration each run. And uh, so it kind of keeps you optimal, especially if you're doing a real long job um, or splicing, you know, multiple locations type of deal. Uh, the auto here to answer real quick, the G654. So this is where you'd most likely want to be because what this auto mode here is actually, it will identify, you see, um, multiple kind of designations of fibers there. It will identify what type of fiber you've loaded into the splicer and then apply the appropriate parameters per that fiber type. So even if you're splicing like 654 to 652, it's gonna pick that up and then it's gonna apply the appropriate splice parameters there. Now, another thing too, now most folks I don't think know this, but if you scroll here, you see a ton of different modes at your disposal. What these are are actually optimized splice modes for a, a variety of splice combinations. So different fiber types from different manufacturers, even 80 micron fiber there, for example. And so you can kind of look through here and see the brand. So if you know exactly what fiber it is, i.e. the type and, the, and really the brand of the fiber primarily. That's what these are kind of listed by. Uh, you can pick this specific splice mode and that'll even be, you know, the best, the best kind of quality you could ask for. And it doesn't have the extra step of fiber identification, so it'll be a little faster. So getting back into the speed, however, so I was actually using this SM fast mode. So this SM fast, as it designates, is uh, the fastest mode. So you saw there was actually a little counter there on screen as I was splicing about six, seven seconds. Seven seconds typically is where it lands as far as total time to from when I load both fibers and then it takes it away, closes the wind protector, splices and finishes seven seconds. And so 
Again, depends on how quickly you're moving. That may not be that big of a deal breaker for you, but that definitely gives you a few extra seconds. And when you're doing a lot of fibers, sometimes that makes a difference. Um, one last thing even on your loss limits here in the splice mode. So again, in this machine, I tap this little pencil here and I'm gonna go down here to my error limit. The reason I mentioned that is because I, of course, every splice you do has an estimate and you can't just let any splice you know, fly by without actually knowing if it was quality, right? Um, you get the little loss that pops up on screen, but maybe you were looking at something else and didn't check it. So what I'll do actually is come in here to my loss limit and I'll set this at whatever my spec actually is, whether it's 0 0.1, 0 0.05, you saw I got 0 0.05 here. And so what that helps me do though, is I don't have to look at the splicer every time a splice finishes. I know that if it's higher than my allowed limit for whatever my job may be, it's gonna yell at me and give me an error message and I'll re-splice anyway. So again, if I'm going smoothly and getting through my splices quickly and they're all good quality, I did my art calibration before I got started, you know, then I'm just gonna keep churning and burning. I don't wanna stop and look at the estimate of every splice if I don't have to. Um, so you can do the same kind of thing there, even if you don't like, for example, you know, you don't want cleave angles to be larger than a certain amount. You know, hey, I only like cleaves under two. That's from my experience giving me the best results. You can do that. And so all that's at your disposal. And then lastly, if you really do, however, still need to go back and check the, the data, you can come in here to the memory here and uh, that'll give you the ability to, you know, look at all my results, see what the losses are. So if you do need to go back, that's uh, certainly at your disposal. And then, as I mentioned, last thing we'll kind of talk about here is uh, this is, you know, tracking my cleave quality and my cleave quantity. Uh, again, just taking time and energy off your hands. Uh, this is actually tracking. You see, I've got 220 cleaves at this blade position. And when it gets to a point that it starts to error, you know, I get large cleave angles, for example, or cleave shape, no good. Uh, it's going to pick this up at whatever the count may be. And then it's going to say, hey, cleaver, rotate your blade. And of course, I will allow it because I trust the splicer is doing its job. So that's um, so that's what this is here for. And so you can even set it up if you want to, to where it'll just rotate the blade without you even looking at it. And so, again, you can just keep on splicing. It's going to rotate and uh, and keep on going. Um, I see a question from Judy. Fiber reading appears on the screen. Uh, I assume by fiber reading, you mean loss estimate. Uh, so, yes, real quickly, the um, I apologize if I blew past it. The SM fast is fast. Um, but there is a loss estimate that does pop up right in the dead middle of the screen after the splice. So you do have a second or two to look at that if you do want to see it after the splice is finished. Good questions. Um, so without further ado, or with wrapping up, um, so those are some of the, uh, the things here. I'll back out real quick uh, as we finish our time on this live stream. Uh, again, we just talked about the sheath clamps and some of the functionality in the secondary arm that gives you uh, the possibility to take advantage of the automation more uh, accurately and with less potential for, for mistake or error. Uh, the loose buffer uh, features that, again, just real quick, if you need to adjust for a loose buffer splice, and then even the uh, positioning technique that uh, I did botch a little bit because I forgot to take my previous sleeve out of the tube heater, so don't do it like me. Um, but all in all, you kind of get the idea, however, of uh, the advantages in the sheath clamps, even some things we can do inside of the splicer itself the splice mode, loss estimates, cleave errors, and then letting the splicer manage my cleaver. Um, so thank you all for stopping by. If anybody else has any other comments, uh, questions, uh, if I didn't catch any, um, let's see here. I'm looking through just to make sure I'll take you back to see me. I don't have anything else to show you currently. Um, I don't see any other questions, but if you do have any, feel free to uh, drop them in the comments and we'll of course circle back around to them. Uh, and then, of course, reach out to your local AFL personnel and we'll do whatever we can to uh, support you. Thanks for stopping by.